the wait is over. Today, the finals has officially released and I'm so excited that Embark invited me to preview season one and its content. So grab your cafecito and let's dive right into the lore. First things first, sponsors. As we know throughout the pre-launch playtest, better known as Season Zero, there were two official sponsors for the game show, Ospius and Eastwood. But with the launch of Season 1, we are getting at least one new sponsor, Holto, which has been revealed to be an insurance company with the slogan, Digitally Insured, Virtually Secured. It is led by CEO Quemby Rutile, and they claim that virtually any virtual asset can be insured against damage or loss. The other sponsor for Season 1 is Volpe, which we got during the open beta and it has been confirmed to be the creators of the VR technology used in the game show. It is led by CEO Mackenzie Lapis, who appears to be friends with Scotty, one of the finals commentators, as heard in the intro dialogue for this season. And so I asked Mackenzie for a pre-release version and- Scotty, we're on air. Oh! Uh, welcome back to the finals, the world's greatest game show. It seems like Scotty might have wanted to test Volpe's VR tech before it was released. Mackenzie also has his own stage, known as the Lapis Grandstand, on the new map Las Vegas 2032. And yes, this map is gorgeous. Here's what I found. Right off the bat, the name of the arena is Las Vegas 2032, which is interesting because the game is launching in 2023. So the number swap might be an important date in the finals world, considering it takes place around the year 2100. And like all previous maps, there are new brand appearances scattered through the arena. The main POIs include Argon Casino, Zarabi Las Vegas, Casino Eastwood Drive, Art Deco Glamora, Magma Hot Drink Bar, and Lapis Grandstand, to mention a few. There's a couple of brands that I didn't get to carefully inspect, but they also include the Vegas Sphere and it's hilarious. I didn't get to record it, but go look for it at the west end of the map. As for some of the more obvious featured brands, we have Rob's Wristbands, which is a direct reference to Embark Chief Content Officer, who loves wristbands. There's also Panda Patches, who sell the in-game cosmetics, and DXC, which we've seen before, has a sunglasses booth and according to it, the brand was established in 1958. While it's too early to tell what this actually implies in the lore, it's a very specific date. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a reference to American Optical, the company contracted by the US military to produce the first aviator-styled sunglasses and the original pilot sunglasses, the FG-58. These sunglasses were issued to and used by NASA, which was created the same year. Actually, the original pilot was the pair of sunglasses worn by the entire Apollo 11 crew in 1969. And considering that we've already seen DXC's viral pressure device subheading in their cosmetics, I'm eager to see how this all connects in the grand scheme of things and the easter egg hunt. The last thing about the maps is that Monaco's name has been changed to Monaco 2014, which could be a reference to the 2014 Formula 1 Grand Prix but again, we'll have to wait a bit more until we can confirm how this connects to the lore. On to the battle pass, which is extensive. 96 items over a set of 12 pages, where each of them is inspired by a different theme based on the new Vegas arena. Page 3 has Volpe's Boxer, which introduces this really cool mechanic of displaying your gamer tag in-game. This is probably the piece that thoroughly confirms how we, the players, are part of the final lore just because we play it. I honestly think it's great that Embark chose this route because it reinforces both individual player expression and our journey as contestants in the game. It makes our efforts part of the finals narrative and not just gameplay but also that we could potentially influence this storyline in the future. Anyway, going back to the Battle Pass items, page 5 has Holto's Evil Knievel theme, page 11 is about Flat Earthers, which implies that the socialites might be a conspiracy theory group, and page 12 has Odilia's Legendary Bundle. Now, this for me is the most important part of the Battle Pass because it introduces a new character for the finals, Odilia the Trickster who was a popular contestant in the game show for the group called Shadow Flock. 
In fact, they also introduced a new light gadget known as the Vanishing Bomb, and it seems like this might have been Odilia's signature class. Overall, I think the battle pass is very robust and offers tons of great items for player customization, and I can't wait to see how many more characters get introduced through legendary cosmetics. One last thing though, what's next? Well, here are 5 things that Embark wants to focus on. First and foremost, making sure the game runs smoothly. This is their number one priority above all and it's been very clear since the closed alpha. Second, fixing bugs and issues before content. And given how much time the game has spent in development, it wouldn't surprise me if they at least have the first 6 months of content already mapped out so they can focus on gameplay. Which brings me to the third point, they want to create a universe that allows them to say yes more often than no. But at the same time, they would like to make promises that they can keep, which is why we haven't seen that many announcements and why we probably won't get a roadmap for the future of the game. And lastly, launching fresh content throughout the seasons. That is, new events, new modes, skins, outfits, characters, and more. We've been very patient for the release of the finals, and it's been a long time since I was genuinely excited for a new multiplayer game. In the meantime, I'll be hunting for more lore and see who can reach the finals. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for the support in my last video. It was truly humbling, so please consider subscribing. Until next time, this is Beer, signing off.